Hey there, folks. Welcome to Let's Play Games West Virginia. I'm Kevin. I'm Heather. I'm Rebecca. And we have a guest for Poke Monday. And Frank. And Frank. If you're new to Poke Mondays, not and Frank. <laughs> Let's Play Games West Virginia is a group of West Virginia-based streamers. We have something going on every night of the week, and Monday is, as always, Poke Mondays. Poke Mondays with Frank and humans. Frank and humans. Oh, I've got sound on somewhere. Oh, yeah, you have sound on. Awkward. My bad. Yeah, so, you're bad. I wanted to uh, thank Devin Vera for the awesome fan art that we had at the beginning of the stream. That's pretty cool. That's the thank first you. time we've had fan art on the channel. Um, it's super adorable. And it's super cool. So uh, I hope it's all right, but we went ahead and took it and wanted to make it our feature splash page for this stream. So thanks again. We really, really appreciate it. So a thing happens. Yeah, a thing happened. What is that, Kevin? We're going to GoFest. So we uh, were able Which to get one? tickets for the Chicago Go Fest lottery, and we were able to claim tickets, and we are headed to Chicago next month for exciting Pokemon fun things. That's true. You want to tell the internet how that happened? I, I submitted to the lottery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you submitted to the lottery. So and... this year, unlike previous years, you had to submit your name to a lottery to even be able to buy tickets to go to Go Fest, which is... One of uh, three major events around the world. This one is in Chicago. One of three Go Fests. Which is uh, within reasonable driving distance or flying distance for us. So we went ahead and tossed our names into the hat and we were selected to get tickets. And so we On like the last round. On the last round. The last yeah. round. So pro if not the last round, the one before. So we were able to snag Go Fest tickets and we will be happy to record lots of Pokemon related content and share it with you from Chicago. I get new Pokemon! <laughs> so many new pokemon they're unknowns there's going to be probably hippopotamuses uh which is new pokemon there's going to be possibly shiny lapras i'm guessing um we know that horsey is on the event page so there could possibly be a shiny horsey i don't know maybe i'm hopeful um what else is on there mammal swine so of course more watermelon pigs um the lots of things yeah I'm hoping that they do something like the previous Go Fest where they had different biomes and you could get certain regionals that you might not otherwise. So I, I'm holding out for a Torkoal. Uh, I'd like a volcano, a volcano turtle. They did have on the event page that they're going to be Pachirisu there. Mm. So the regional Pokemon that is Gen 4 that is only in, I think, like the cold places like Alaska and maybe parts of Canada um, will be available at GoFest. So that is one of the regionals. Like we saw at GoFest, or sorry, uh, Safari Zone in Singapore, they had plenty of Tropius. So that was their regional Pokemon. Now we are going to have Pachirisu, which is the cute little white squirrel. White squirrel. Hopefully we won't need not that squirtle. one. We, we may be arranging for a, a trade for that, um, but if it's not, we'll, we'll definitely bring the sun back for our local players. Absolutely, we will. I'm trying to like go through my Pokedex and see how many different things I can delete to like make space for all of the stuff I'm gonna catch that day because I'm gonna catch it all. Like I'm basically gonna catch them all, you know, because that's kind of like the deal. GoFest has a series of rules that you have to abide by for as far as like uh, video and audio recording. Basically, nothing at a professional level, no external audio equipment at all. Um, so we're going to be using an older phone to take video in addition to our phones for playing, mm -hmm. extra battery packs, there's like a clear backpack rule, some issues about food and food preparation. So definitely a bunch of stuff to read up on and comply with before we head out there. And I may have already started like a Word document on Microsoft Word of all of the things like logistics about the location, where we need to check in for the North Gate. Uh, what sorts of things we will probably want to have, like baby wipes, so that we can clean up, you know, since we'll be in a park all day long. Uh, an extra t-shirt so that we don't have to be smelly all day long. Like snacks that are prepackaged, bottles of water that are sealed, all those sorts of things. So I'm like on this. I want to, if I'm going to get to do Go Fest, I want to do it right. You know what I mean? Like I want to have everything in that clear backpack, like just filled to the brim of batteries and extra snacks. <laughs> Welcome to the tra uh, channel, Trainer CJ. Thanks for tuning in. 
Uh, one of the things that's also of note is that the area of the park, which is designated for GoFest activities, is five times larger than it was in 2017. Mm -hmm. So uh, the event is going to be much larger. And the fact that they had to limit tickets, I think, suspects that, uh, or at least lends me to suspect that there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So one thing that we will definitely be the guinea pigs for uh, is that we have tickets for Thursday of the event. So that means then that we get to be the ones to test out and see how everything is running and if it's smooth, which means then that there should probably be a lot of glitches that we may have to work through uh, during our day there. But we did get the early access pass, so we will be there at 9 a.m. sharp, well, probably earlier than 9 a.m., but we can check in at 9 a.m., which is the early VIP pass. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised that the early check-in pass was only $10 more than the regular pass. Which is um, totally, like, why wouldn't you pick that? We're already traveling to saying. Chicago, so, like, 10 additional dollars is, is, like, negligible. Yeah, 20 bucks between the two of us, like, why wouldn't you? So we're definitely going to do that. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to stream from the hotel that evening. It kind of depends on the internet connectivity there. Um, how much stuff we can take, but we'll definitely have lots of Pokemon Go Fest content that immediately following Monday. Absolutely. I, I'm hoping that we can uh, do some live activity, but it's hard to tell, you know, what we will be able to take into the park since uh, Niantic is kind of picky about what sorts of accessories you can and can't take with you. Yeah. It seems like this is a new uh, stipulation, like at Go Fest, sorry, restart at safari zone um in singapore i saw people well i saw footage from people who had like their own selfie sticks like their own little gorilla pods their dslrs all different kinds of stuff uh to record footage so i kind of suspect that the people who have media tickets may have exemptions for video recording oh equipment, that may that happen just the, the, the hoi ploy uh of us the plebeians of us yeah so th that that's my Suspicion. I don't know that to be true. Okay. But we definitely see, like, you know, the top four or five YouTubers for Pokemon Go definitely have uh, AV equipment when they're at Safari Zone and GoFest. Yeah. One thing that I found funny that was on the list, uh, you can't take cooking equipment with you, uh, which I guess in the past people have taken, like, Bunsen burners and different, like, cooktops and just, like, made snacks all day for themselves so they didn't have to leave the Pokemon in the park. Um, so that's kind of funny to me, but I would totally be one of those people that would like set up shop and make like ramen noodles in the middle of the park if I could, you know, like why would you leave if you could just bring stuff with you? Uh, so Devin asks, when did they add the Alolan Pokemon? It's been at least six months. So... Unless you mean specifically inside eggs. The Alolan Pokemon, um, wait, whoa, did you get a... a no, that's not shiny. That's regular. Sorry. That was regular. Okay. Uh, I got worried for a minute. Um, the Alolan Pokemon have been in eggs since, let's see, at least, at least September. last fall, I would say. Um, because during the summer, they were the regional Pokemon, right? So um, we saw that the regional Pokemon were in eggs shortly after we got back from Scotland in July of 2018. So it wasn't too long after that. I want to say like August or September, uh, those Pokemon started showing up in eggs, um, in seven kilometer eggs, which is your buddy eggs. Um, so they have been out in the wild before that. They had been trickled out, you know, Geodude and I think Diglett and what else was, oh, um, Executor. Those were some of the wild Alolan forms, but then they were put into eggs. I hope that helps, Devin. That's as best as I can recall in my memory when they came about. Um, but now, um, we do have an egg switch, so um, all of the eggs now have a much larger library of what can be found in them. So in your two kilometer eggs, you can find your uh, Gen 4 starters like Chimchar and um, Turtwig and Piplup. Uh, in addition to what's already there. And in some of your 5 and 10k eggs, those uh, groups have gotten larger. So I have hatched, I think, three or four Larvitar out of 10k eggs already. And those were there before, but they were super uncommon. So I'm pretty excited about the egg change. 
I've had one or two. Uh, since we just came off the uh, egg extravaganza event and we're prepping for GoFest, I haven't purchased any new super incubators. So I'm currently working through a stash of like 20 regular slow as hell incubators. Hmm. And uh, that's that's been my week. Yeah. How do you sit on incubators? I have one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That your yeah. your your infinity one? Yeah. Yeah. The infinity incubator is is Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, tell us Rebecca about this um, gym situation in which you have found yourself in a r- more rural area. Yeah, so there's two gyms where I'm at, and I usually spend quite a bit of time in them, usually like 10 to 12 days. Um, the last time was 34 days in a row before coming. <laughs> 34 <laughs> days in a gym. Yeah. So that means then that for the 33 days that her Pokemon was held captive, she did not get any Poke coins. Zero coins. So that makes it heckin' awkward, right? Because you put your Pokemon in there thinking you're going to get 50 coins a day, but it's only 50 coins when the Pokemon's kicked out. So if it's there for, you know, a month, uh, then you don't get many coins. And you really can't kick anybody else out of the gym to then put your Pokemon in to get coins. If you actually got 50 coins per day that you were in there... That would actually give incentives to oh, yeah. go to those gyms that oh, are yeah. like less frequented. So it would it would shift things. So you're like right, we have a couple gyms in town where you can get left in there for four to seven days easily, mm-hmm. um, just because it's a little bit further from main roadways. So if that were a thing where like you, you people would would hunt those ones out. Oh yeah. That, like that would speed them up if they would increase the coin reward period. Plus that would even things out for some of the more rural players who. Um, don't always have access to the higher level raids. Um, that would make things some. I mean, it wouldn't make up for all of the problems, but it would be a little bit nicer if you had a ton of coins to sit on, like mm. a a dragon with a lair, you know. Yeah. Like that would be nice. Well, because then you could be if it was if you were stuck like that, you'd be guaranteed pretty much two super incubators a week. Mm-hmm. Were you able to get any of the shinies from this round? No, I did not get a single shiny either, Latios or Latias. I did have a Latios in my research box, uh, I think it was last week maybe? I can't remember. Maybe that's it. Anyway, um, I did get one regular from the the seven day research box, but I have not had any shiny luck with those. So, um, let us know if you've had shiny luck with any of the Latios or Latias, or even just the research boxes. I've never had a, I've never had a shiny Pokemon from either a field research or a seven day research. Either one. Mm. Never. You have? Shiny Memphis. Shiny Fire Chicken. But you can't name it Fire Chicken. You, you mm-hmm. can't name it Spicy Chicken. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you can go look at why that is, but... Hey, future Aiden man, welcome to the stream. Thanks for tuning in to Let's Play Games West Virginia and Pokemon Day. Woo! I don't think I've ever gotten a shiny from a research task either, except if unless it's been a special event like the Phoebus. Oh, yeah, you definitely got a Phoebus. Does that even count, though? Oh, I guess technically then I have two because I got a shiny Lotad from the mm. special research day. So I guess I have had that, but only in the special event time. Not like a fancy seven-day spicy chicken from, you know, from Chick-fil-A. I've had a, a rash of good luck for shiny babies. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought you were going to stop after I had a rash. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah just go on. thought I'd announce that to the internet. Rash of babies. <laughs> rash of... Uh, Baby rash. <laughs> Baby than, baby, Diaper rash? Better than baby rashers, like rasher of bake of ham. Ba- baby rash, anyway, butt uh, rash, diaper rash. I've had oh, like three are. shiny baby eggs in the last like six Dang, weeks. Dang, Kevin. And you've also had uh, how many of the little cute little Azurl mouse? Two. You've had two. You got one and I still have the other. One of which you so kindly traded to me because I wanted a shiny greet and cute little adorable thing. It's like a little mint. Uh, if you haven't seen the shiny uh, Azuril baby, it's a little mint green. It's like blue. apple green. It's like bright green. Hmm. Yeah. And it's super adorable. I love it so much. Speaking of shinies, uh, 
we have now, of course, after the uh, Singapore Safari Fest, we now have shiny Lapras that's out in the wild. I happened to see a Lapras today when I was out running around, and I clicked on it immediately because otherwise, you know, why do you have any reason to click on Lapras? It's not always super relevant. Sometimes it's helpful if you power it up so much, but the shiny is like a magenta color and is really cute, and I really want it because it's adorable. It's like, it's like almost fuchsia. And is really cool. Hmm. So I'm hoping that we can find that at GoFest. Uh, I, I more want uh, regionals that I'm not otherwise likely to get. Like that. Hmm. That's my main concern. Yeah. Do you prefer? Would you prefer more regional Pokemon, or would you prefer to find shinies? Shiny. Shiny. Me too. The scar off from my heart. But see, for GoFest, like we're only gonna get. We may not get to go again, and so you always have. The possibility, even if it's small, of getting shinies for anything yeah. for which there's a shiny. I guess but that's true. But a regional, if, if it's a special event like that, like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, I guess. That's just my thinking. But I like the shinies. And I'm looking forward to unknown. I still have not ever had an unknown. I do have a trade set up with somebody to get an unknown, but... Um, that's going to be a while, so I'm looking forward to having all of the letters. I don't think I'll get all of the letters at GoFest, but I hope to at least get a couple. Yeah, I don't have one either. I could have had one in a trade, but I'd already done a special trade that day, so no! uh, SMP uh, snagged that one. Nice. So SMP, who does not play really anymore, has an unknown. Yeah. Which that can't be traded. hurts me a little bit inside, because I want it. SMP, if you're listening, I want that unknown that you can't really trade to me because it's already been traded to you. So I'm sad inside in the fields. Why does it get a question mark? It gets a question mark if I have personally uh, checked out the appraisal system, but I haven't used Poke Genie yet. Mm -hmm. So if I have checked that and I know it's somewhere in that ballpark, I'll put a question mark. To then go back and confirm it with Poke Genie, I see. which is super helpful later. So, what else is going on this week, Kevin? Uh, we had we didn't talk about the ground event yet. Did we? Nope. So we've had a ground event that was going from the 29th of April through uh, the 2nd of May, which has already passed. Uh, in which case, you could have found a shiny shiny sand shrew. That's not easy to say and Diglett, of which I got zero on both counts. You got shiny zeros of all the things, right? No shinies. No shinies. Nothing. Not a not a single one. Shiny sand shrew is not that there, there's a tongue twister there. Shiny sand shrew. Sand shrew shiny. Shiny sand shrew shiny. Did you end up with any of those? I did. So I was traveling this week um, as part of my job. Every, well, twice a year, I have to travel to go do educational things. And I ended up in Atlanta this week. So, speaking of regionals, I was able to get a Carnivine finally, which is regional and exclusive to uh, the Southeast uh, United States, I believe, just the Southeast US. So, since I was in Atlanta, I figured, well, this is the land of Carnivine. I will be able to get plentiful, a plentiful bounty of Carnivine to trade to all of the people that I know. But because of the ground event, I found one single Carnivine. One. And I had to put lure modules on all of the Pokestops around me to get it to show up on the map. And then I was like walking around in the building furiously trying to get it to show up. So I got one Carnivine, which I know is not your question, Kevin, but I got one Carnivine. And I also got two shiny Diglets in Atlanta. So um, I did promise this one here to give him my shiny Diglet because no. we're married. Yeah, you no, asked. I wanted the Carnivine. Oh, that's right. You wanted the Carnivine. So that is currently up for grabs. But we can't trade it right now because I traded her a Smeargle. And I traded a Smeargle to someone today, too. Yes. So we did some trading earlier um, because Becca is in town and she has yet to find a Smeargle with the Go Snapshot. 
I empathize. I got my first one like two weeks ago, and I tried a bunch. It was well over a thousand photos. Yeah. So random number generator, not in your favor. Um, so she ended up giving me one of her shiny Raichu with the witch hat on it, which was the Halloween Pokemon exclusive. So as I am kind of known for, I keep a lot of Pikachus, Pikachus with hats, shiny Pikachus, shiny Pichus, uh, shiny Raychus, Raychus with hats, you name it. I have an unreasonable amount of my storage devoted to these things because you never know. And you never know when somebody is going to want that hat Pokemon that they were, you know, maybe they had a really rough day and missed out on the Ash Hat Snapchat thing. Or, sorry, not Snapchat. Snapshot. <laughs> and I have one, right? So I can give people cute Pikachus with hats or Raychus with hats. And you never know when that might come to be beneficial. So I keep them all. Or I keep a lot of them. I'll put it that way. So I have an unreasonable amount of Pichus, Pikachus, and Raychus that have really no significance in the larger game whatsoever. This is a part of my shiny luck for the last couple of weeks. Yay! I hatched a shiny Smoochum. Now I don't feel so bad about setting up a trade for my second shiny Smoochum. Since you have one. <laughs> and the long, slow grind for 400 Whalemer candies finally culminated this week as well. So that's your first Whalemer? That's the first one. First Whale Lord. Woo! Yeah, sorry. That's what I meant. Whale Lord. Whale Blimp. Not to be confused with Thanos. <laughs> Which is actually what one of our friends, our poker friends, named his shiny Whale Lord. It is Thanos. So He's purple with some Yeah, it's kind of fitting, ways. right? Got the lines on the chin and purplish and awkward and big. But yeah, like if you, if you don't see it, even if you're using uh, pineapple berries, these guys are not super common, at least in our area. And so it took me a long time to, to slug through that. And I see that I have my second spherical that is now traded away. So uh, one thing, if you have still not caught a smeargol, um, remember that when you use your snapshot, that if Smeargol appears, it will have the same moves as the Pokemon that you are taking a picture of. So for this guy, um, I believe it has double dragon. Nope, it has not double dragon. It had mud moves. So um, that means then that that Pokemon just has that move set. If you stick it in a gym, that's what it's going to be. It's how it be sometimes. Secondary bags would be sweet. Oh, that's you. Sorry. Jason was saying that you need a secondary bag just for Pikachu and related. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. So ah. I said we need someone's PC, like in the game, where you could like store Pokemon that you're not actively using. Ooh, like... Like in the in the game when there is a trainer spot for your Pokemon, right? You can go put your Magikarp there and like rent out their services to like train your Magikarp for you. Uh, I would totally do that for like Poke Storage elsewhere. I was thinking like the the PC that you can access from the Poke Center. Oh. And you can like. Oh, okay. So you would have to work with the professor then. Yeah. Okay. She's like, hey, hold on to these 500 Pokemon I'm not using, but I'm carrying around with me. But I can't ever let go because of sentimental value. Right. Yeah, that's that's the real struggle here. It's not really that they're relevant or helpful or that even Professor will want them for research. It's just I can't get rid of them. I got rid of a couple of hundred the other week. Like, I cut down to less than 700 uh... total. Uh, ooh, who's that? That's a shiny Rayquaza. Who is named Reserve because uh, someone held it for you? Somebody had extra Rayquaza, and we became lucky friends. So we knew that the Pokemon would be guaranteed lucky. So we wanted to trade some of the legendary Pokemon that might be super beneficial uh, to have uh, as lucky so that you get the Stardust discount when you power it up. So I ended up getting a shiny, not shiny, I wish. <laughs> A lucky Rayquaza, um, and I have actually already powered it up somewhat because I get the field research task to power up a Pokemon five times, and I use it for that. So um, that has come in handy already. 
I missed those raids. I only have one, and you traded it to me. So yeah. Do you have Rayquaza? No, no green serpent lizard. Dragon. Dragon. Dragon lizard. Yeah. So the other thing that happened recently this week is the uh, origin form Giratina, and that is now out of. Uh, it wasn't just this week, but yeah. That's true. It is now officially out of raids, which I guess that did happen this week. So, last week? Whatever the end of April was, this is all a blur for me. So, um, that is to say, Giratina is now out of raids. So you have no longer, you no longer have the opportunity to get those. But we do have a new raid boss in we tier 5 eggs. A couple of new raid bosses, depending on where you're at. Well, yeah, depending on where you are. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was reading Jason's comment about my Pokemon petting zoo. Yes, that's that's the whole premise of Pokemon, is it not? Like that and dog fighting. Yeah, ooh. there are a lot of ethical questions there. Um, these are. <laughs> yeah, now I just feel bad about their <laughs> containment and captivity. So, well, here we are. Um, at least that one looks like a pool bug skimmer filter, as I keep saying after weeks. Um, Who are our new level 5 raid <laughs> bosses? Sorry, I'm distracted. <laughs> we have the Lake Trio that are in raids now. They will be in raids until I believe the 27th of May. So you do have plenty of time to get to raids. For the Americas and Greenland, you have Azelf. Or a zelf, a zelf on a shelf, a zelf on a shelf. I don't know. Anyway, you have uh, the opportunity to catch your own a zelf. If you are in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, or India, you have the possibility to catch a mesprit or me spirit. I don't know. Me sprit spritz me with water. <laughs> anyway, you can get a mesprit. And if you are in Asia, the Asia Pacific region, you can get Uxie. Um, so those are the Lake Trio Pokemon that we now have released to us. Uh, while that was all happening, they were released as wilds first. So if you see people on the internet talking about that phenomenon, uh, they were magically released out into the wild as a super rare Pokemon. They had like a 0 0.02 catch rate. And um, it was hard to tell where they were going to show up for, like, that first several hours. Thanks for the follow, Future Eden Man. Thanks for the follow! Um, so, with the Lake Trio, we also see now that Niantic has told us that they are fully in raids. So, that's news this week. Um, in addition to having our first batch of Azelf raids. Um, other news... As that was all happening and coming down, um, we also saw that there was an accident, right? There was an accidental release of a Pokemon. Very briefly. For all of 12 minutes, in the middle of the night one night, there were Shellos. It was super rare, of course, but those who happened upon them, there are two different kinds of Shellos. One is like a blue-green, and one is like a pink-red. Um, so those are the East and West Shellos that both evolve into Gastrodon. So um, both of those are forms of the same final form, right? Sort of like Nidoran and Nidorina. They both have their own forms there. Um, but those are released for 12 minutes. So if you got one, that's like a super rare Pokemon, and you should really use that for the fanciest trade that you want in life. So don't give it up for just anything. That's what I'm saying. I'm imagining there's like some giant switchboard with like Pokemons and someone like typoed and just like hit two keys instead of one. Yeah, totally. And it's just like like a, like a bat, like cave wall of Pokemons. Like release this one. Release this guy. Off it went. Release this snail into the world. But can you imagine? Like, granted, it was daytime for someone for what during that release. But yeah. like, you're usually like walking around doing your thing and then like boom, you're like, oh hey. There was part of me while I was laying in bed and I was like, oh my god, there's a new Pokemon. I have to go out and get it. And then I was like, that's ridiculous. I'm just going to lay here. And so then 10 minutes later, they were like, oh, 
they're all gone. And I was like, I'm glad I didn't get out of bed because I would have been really mad. <laughs> you know, like, you don't get out of bed to then go and be disappointed that your Pokemon is no longer there. True story. So, yeah. Back in the uh, Ingress days when I was playing Ingress, uh, I was playing late at night because I had a weird work shift. And I was walking around a park and I was taking down an Ingress portal. And I heard a sliding glass door open and goes, Someone's attacking our portal from inside an apartment nearby. So I hid behind a car and sat on the ground and, like, attacked the portal. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, you know, night playing can be fun. It can be. It can also be super dangerous, right? Remember that Asian guy that, like, got, like, beat up for being on a bike in a park after dark? Uh, like, cops came up and, like accosted the guy for just being in a park after dark playing mm. Pokemon. So that mm. happened right as Pokemon was being released. Anyway, be careful of your surroundings, right? As the app tells you. Um, don't do dumb things. That's dangerous. So, yeah. I'm not sure what's happening here. The footage. Uh, Future Aiden Man is asking where the footage comes from. So we play throughout the week and we record that footage. Uh, so there's no spoofing going on, and this is previously recorded footage that we then sort of talk over. So if you see the uh, top red bar on the screen there, that is actually my footage. You can tell that's the screen capture function. Uh, so for Apple iPhone, that is the way that I get to record my footage. So um, if y'all send me messages and text messages, I probably won't get them because I'm doing a screen capture, and I don't want that to show up on the stream. So... Mine, mine usually has an LPGWV uh, circle on the screen, and I do not have a red bar in mine because there's a native Android capture for games. Yep. So we uh, have a promotional event coming up for uh, a movie coming out soon. Yes, we do. Tell us what it is, Detective Kevin. So do, I, I actually didn't <laughs> think this was going to be a real movie because of uh, who... Uh, Ryan Reynolds was the voice. The Detective I Pikachu even... film is coming out. I thought it was like a Deadpool like thing, and there was going to be a series. I of... thought it was a joke. I definitely thought it was a joke, but apparently it's a real movie, and uh, apparently the game was a lot of fun. I missed that one. So Detective Pikachu is coming out, and uh, there will be a series of thick. Ooh, ah! There's your Carnivine. Carnivine. Who kind of? Is someone made a Muppet of like the Little Shop of Horrors plant? Oh, yeah. It's like a Muppet of that exactly what it looks like. meets like a ham puppet meets spaghetti. Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, I agree. Well, con congrats on your uh, rare catch there. <laughs> Thanks. So the Detective Pikachu event, uh, there's going to be additional things in the style shop so you can get fun hats and shirts and shorts. Uh, Pikachu with a detective hat, like circa 1890, uh, will be the photobombing Pokemon in the AR Plus uh, photo snap. Look, a shiny Diglett! Ooh, there's a shiny Diglett. Uh, there's going to be double catch XP speci and special uh, field researches as well. Yes. So, as you are preparing for... That, that starts tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, as you're preparing for the horrible nature of this movie, which I can't even imagine. I hope it's good, but I'm really not looking forward to it. Um, at least we get some perks in Pokemon Go for it. So... Be sure to take advantage of that double catch XP because you can then use your lucky egg to make that like time and a half on your experience points and get really leveled up there. So um, as you are playing, be sure to use your lucky eggs. That starts tomorrow. Um, we're also going to see special field re or not special. Sorry, that term gets used a lot. Um, there are other field research events. Ugh. Particular field research events. There are field research tasks as part of the event mm. that will have special Pokemon in them. But we don't know what those are yet because that starts tomorrow. So keep us posted. So it'll be 1 p.m. Eastern uh, tomorrow. So don't do the, the thing where you pop stuff early. Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's... It's just a photo bomb, so... How long is that event? That event... Um, I don't know. I don't think I saw an ending conclusion on that. Um, I know that you will see more Pokemon from the movie in the wild and in raids, but let's see what the event says. 
May 7th through the 17th. Okay, so you have a good deal of time, about okay. a week and a couple days. And that might be Pacific time, so that 1 p.m. is... Oh. That's That would be what, like 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Yeah. Yeah. So, photobomb with Sherlock Holmes Pikachu. Although Ryan Reynolds will not be talking to you, that would be creepy. Um, Pokemon from the movies, which means probably, right, we saw in the trailer, we definitely saw, um, what's that creepy guy? Mr. Mime. So... Mr. Mime, Bulbasaur, Jigglypuff. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh I think, did I see an Onyx or just heard talk about an Onyx? It's on a poster. Oh yeah, Onyx room. is on a poster. So it's possible that we see all of those guys, but I don't know how they will work out with the Mr. Mime being regional. So that would be cool if it wasn't regional for like a hot second, but we'll see. Yep, so if you missed it from either of the previous events, maybe that'll be a time to snag it. Yeah, that would be cool. What else is going on, Kevin? Uh, we still have the Habitat Challenge for the Pokemon Snapshot event going on. Mm -hmm. So if you take a picture of a Pokemon in its natural habitat or something there like, uh, there's a series of hashtags to post it, and then you can potentially win a ticket to GoFest, right? Yes. You, If you are selected as the first place winner, you get to go to a GoFest of your choice. So you could go to Germany or the third one, which I think is somewhere in the Asian region. It's in the Asia Pacific region. Um, so you could go to either of those GoFest, and you basically get a full ride. You get the full trip for free. Oh, really? I thought yeah. it was just the ticket. No, I'm pretty sure they covered travel hmm. as well. Um, and your second and third place winners will get a Pokestop devoted to their picture. Um, that so that's. Fun. Fun, but much less cool as, you know, GoFest tickets. So choose wisely and maybe do an is elf on a shelf out by the water because that would be appropriate. I'm not going to do that one, so I'm giving it to the internet to go have fun with. Because I thought my, my uh, buddy challenge was pretty clever, right? I was in the gym and I had my Machamp and I said, we are Machampions. Um, but nobody picked that one because apparently it's too punny. I thought it was fun. Yeah, I thought it was excellent. I said, gotta lift them all, or gotta press them all, I think. And then we are my champions. But they went with some other cute blissy and a person like holding hands. So I guess it's fine. <laughs> I guess. Whatever. I just want to go to all the Pokemon things. Yeah. So I think that's all of the news that we have this week. Mm -hmm. Um, but we still have footage, so let's just keep talking. So, now's the portion where we turn to our guest, <laughs> and we start asking her rando questions. So if you have a question that you would like to ask my friend Becca, um, that's related to Pokemon, uh, we'll put that caveat there, then ask away, because I'm going to start asking weird Pokemon questions here. So what is your favorite Pokemon? Vulpix. Vulpix? The regular or the Alolan? Both. Both? If you had one shot and you had to choose between them, which would you choose? The Alolan. The what? The Alolan? Mm -hmm. So if you would do the cute wintery Vulpix, I probably would too because I think it's adorable. You've yes. got fire and ice here sort of, you know, George R. R. Martin-esque going on with your types. So I would also go with the little one. What about you, Kevin? Favorite Pokemon of all time? Yeah. I really like Torchic. Uh, but I also, I like Azelf. I, I don't know. I, I, there's new for me. Um, uh -huh. But I think that's working its way up there. Wow. But probably Torchic. I think Torchic is my favorite. Hmm. I don't know. I have to say... My very first favorite Pokemon was definitely Squirtle. Um, that has like been high in my list forever. But I think Tropius is super cute because it's like chomping on leaves and stuff. So I would have to narrow it down to one of those two. That would be my, my top two. Even that, I, I hate naming just two of them because I love Eevee a whole lot and all of the Eeveelutions. 
but I don't know. Okay, so what is the, <sighs> let's see another question. Um, what's the coolest Pokemon that you like to, that you have currently that you love? Like whether it's a shiny or regional or a Spenda. My shiny Moltres. Your shiny chicken. <laughs> shiny spicy chicken. Shiny Moltres. Which was only out for a little bit of time in raids. And then brought back in raids. And then brought back in the special box. Well, not special. The field research box. You know what I mean. What about you, Kevin? What was the question again? Of the Pokemon that you currently have... Which is, like, your very favorite special Pokemon? Oh, the Shiny Gyarados, hands down. Shiny Gyarados. I put that, I put the, <laughs> that, like, Red Dragon in every gym I come across. Is it... He's in a gym right now, actually. Isn't it true that you put it in a gym, like, literally right after you evolved it? Yeah, I, I actually, I put it in a gym so fast that I didn't even uh, IV check it. Yeah. Uh, it, it just went straight into a gym. Yeah, so from the very first days of our streaming, this one here has been hoping for a shiny Magikarp. And even had it worked out so that he could get a trade for a shiny Magikarp because he couldn't find one himself. This is true. This is true. I still haven't seen a shiny Magikarp. But I did you have? One, I got one in trade. That was actually the first shiny I ever got. <laughs> no, <laughs> the first shiny! Was that I didn't Magikarp? Know it was a thing. I was like, what is this? What is this goldfish? Did you evolve it? I have like 417 candies right now, but it was super weak when I caught it, so I'm trying to cover it up. It's her buddy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see her gold, her gold fish every single time I give her a gift. It's cute. It flops around. You know how to do. The two shinies that I really wanted were shiny Magikarp, and then I also wanted a shiny Charmander. Mm, you have both of those. I have both of those now. Fancy. You have a... Although both were trades. I didn't catch either one by myself. You have a, a crispy Charizard. It's true. Yeah. I don't put that one in, in gems as much. I don't either. But I got it in a trade, so I haven't actually gotten one of those myself. Um, let's see. If I had a special favorite Pokemon... Oh, this is tough. Um, off the top of my head, I would have to say my shiny Ho-Oh. Because it looks like it's a metal chicken. You know, it's like both gold and silver on its tail feathers. And that's like really heckin' cool. So I would say that's probably my favorite. Does anybody else have questions? Uh, we didn't get any questions. No. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. We had a lot of fun this week. Um, there's a lot going on, including us going to GoFest in Chicago. So we're super excited about that. We'll keep you posted on uh, how that goes. And as we are preparing for that, we will keep you all in the loop because Listen, I'm so excited. I can't not talk about it. So y'all are going to hear about it if you tune in. Thanks for tuning in. This is Let's Play Games West Virginia. We have something going on every night of the week. Our ticker tape at the bottom has been the schedule. I'd like to thank Becca, our guest for the evening. Ta -da! Thank everyone in the chat, especially our new follows. And uh, also for Devin Vera for the cool fan art. Thanks. So we will see you guys next Pokemon Monday. Bye. Thanks, everybody.